Hello and welcome to the class today. Today is actually quite an interesting class because the artwork we're going to do was supposed to be something completely different. In one of the challenges, the idea was to do to take this uh, photograph you see over here and turn it into something abstract. So I went ahead in, with the idea of trying to create something abstract and at the end of the day my mind must have still been in too much of the painting tight and, and realistic mode. So I ended up with this painting over here. So it wasn't anywhere near abstract enough so I redid that whole class and to get this artwork over here that you saw in the in the challenge tutorial. But I quite like this artwork and I thought I'll so I thought I'd release it as a as an extra tutorial for you. So when you when you listen to the the words that I'm, I'm I'm speaking, just bear that in mind that I was trying to get an abstract effect. So here we go. Enjoy the class and good luck. So I found this picture has got plenty of beautiful shapes on it, and it's from Pixabay. So we've got some oranges and lemons and limes. So we've got oranges, yellows, and greens that we can work with. So needless to say, I'm absolutely clueless of what we're going to do and how this painting is going to turn out. Being an abstract, they tend to do their own thing. So what I'll tend to do is just start somewhere. So let's maybe take just a bit of a bit of a yellow and we'll pop it down in the background and we'll see what happens. So I am painting on a, a deep canvas. So we'll have to paint the sides. So what I'm going to do, so that I don't have to clean my table up afterwards, is I'm going to just put some masking tape down on the table all the way around the edges. I find that when working with abstracts you usually want to protect the surrounding areas because you're usually just splattering and throwing paint at the canvas some days. <laughs> so by protecting your surrounding area it saves you a lot of cleanup afterwards. So I'm just going to grab a, a one inch chip brush like this, dip it in some water. So use lots of water, get this nice and thin. We put just the really thinnest little, thinnest little layer on there. My idea here is just to get the white of the canvas gone. That's a start. From here we can scratch into the paint that's there, we can add paint on top of the paint that's there, we could lift some of the paint off. We can drag lines into the paint. But with a blank canvas, we can just stare at it. So that's probably one of the most important things when you are doing abstracts like this is just to get started. Do anything. Do something. Do anything. Okay, so let's take a look. We've got a circle there, we've got a circle there, we have 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 a circle there, and a bigger one there. So I'm just copying a few little 
little lines for now again just to get me started just to have something can I see those no not particularly okay so let's lift them out let's see what that looks like oh now we're starting to see something eh? just turn the pipe every now and again to make sure we get Otherwise your paper just gets so full of paint that it doesn't actually do any lifting out. So you'll see I'm just doing the, the ones at the back, the ones in the front, all of them just solid circles, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to dry this. So that these lines and stuff don't don't disappear on me. And that'll give us a basis to start from. Okay, so now I'm going to take a look. Where have I got some... Where do I have these yellows? I seem to be... That one, there's a yellow. So I'll put some more yellow in there. There's a yellow guy there. There's a yellow guy. Running around. There. There's another yellow over there. And here's a yellow over here somewhere. Seems to be this guy. So that's giving us already a bit of contrast. Let's grab a bit of bit of orange. I think that orange on its own is a bit harsh. Turn him down with some yellow. Let's see this guy over here. He's he's orange. He's orange. This guy here is orange, he's not yellow. There's an orange below that guy. So look here, now we're getting some nice little brush strokes happening here. All right, I'm probably going to use this orange again at some point, so let's not throw him away. We'll just put him on side. But in case. If we use him, great, we've got it. If we don't use him, oh well. Then he didn't bother anybody there in the corner. Let's do the same with the with the green. So green and orange I can't mix. It's going to give us a brown. We don't want brown at this stage. We want nice vibrant colors now. At this point, so we'll just wipe that off and give the brush a good old wash. I'll just pop down a bit of sap green.
and there on the bottom. So we'll leave that at that. Okay, let's dry off this layer. Alright, we've still got the green there, so I'm going to take quite a bit of water onto the brush. And let's just change that color a bit as well while we add it. So add some yellow into it. Lots of water, really, really watery. This. Let's throw some paint at the canvas. So I'm uh, going to throw the throw it here by the green area and a little bit in a few other places, but mostly here by the green. So this is sort of going to start representing some cells. that off to the side so when you're working with abstracts like this you're gonna see that layers is your friend lots of layers so you'll keep building up the layers until you feel you you're happy and you've got yourself a a good picture. Should now be able to do the same with some orange. So again, I think let's let's change his colour. So it's not quite the same. Instead of adding cadmium yellow into that, maybe let's add some yellow ochre. a bit of a, a duller orange, a shadowy orange. Nice watery paint. Okay, some other places as well, not too much.
Okay, let's put some yellow down for the limes. Or the lemons, eh? Let's get some yellow oak into that as well. So this is not usually a good time to uh, do some cleanup, and now you can see why I say it's always good to protect the surrounding areas when you are painting abstracts. Alrighty, with everything clean again for five minutes, all this here is still wet. All those dots are still wet. So I'm going to take some kitchen towel, paper towel, just crumple it up really rough and just dab it in these dots and that's not only increasing it, it's adding me lighter and darker areas as well opening us up for possibly more splatter at a later stage. Okay, let's just fold them again, do the green. Let's open him up, fold him again, and do the yellow. Alright, so instantly our, our canvas is looking a lot more fuller and certainly a lot more textured. But we know texture is our friend, so let's dry that off and then we'll continue with the next layer of texture. If I look in between these slices of citrus, there's nice dark colors. Because of the top ones are casting shadow on the bottom ones. So I quite like that. So I'm toying between burnt umber and raw umber for the dark ones. The raw umber is a nice brown and, and probably the right tonal value, but the burnt umber is a, is a warmer value, so I think I'm going to go for the burnt umber. And if he's too dark, then maybe we'll lighten him up with the raw umber. We'll see what happens. Maybe even a bit of burnt sienna into that. That's not a bad idea. Because the burnt sienna is a bit of a... It's a, a orangey brown. So I'm going to use the smaller bristle brush for this guy. I'll just mix those two together. So let's find sort of places in between. And I'm going to block it in quite rough. I 
I'm not trying to cover everything. Okay, let's lift some of that out. So I'll just use one of the, the paper towels that I've got floating around here. So these acrylics are started drying already. So I'm just going to dab it in some water. Tap it over. And that will wet a few places. If you're working in oil or so and it hasn't dried then obviously the the paper towel alone would be good enough then you're just going to take the paper towel and dab him here and there and every now and again just open him up and then fold him again and that gives you a nice new area again So because I'm working in acrylic and this has dried a bit, so now there's dabs of water lying there. So as I do this, it's lifting out some of those dabs. You see there, where, where the, the amount of water was lying, lots of water, lots of lift out, a little bit of water little bit of lift out. No water, no lift out. Alright, well we got this brush. Let's say take a bit of this orangey colour. Let's maybe just add a few little wiggles and scribbles to get that idea of the of the cells. So I'm working from from the center outwards. Okay, let's dry this layer off. Let's 
Okay, let's get a bit more orange. Let's just suggest a few other fruits here. With a few lines, just to show that there's other other guys in the background here. It's not just this. It's green. So we don't want that too prominent. So I'm just going to rub over it and then it will sort of just disappear and give us those light little contrasts that we're looking for. That's all the time I'm thinking about what new textures can I bring into this? So I'm going to make sure this guy is well dry. And for that texture, I'm going to use a Liquitex acrylic marker. So it's got literally acrylic paint in here. So this is a titanium white one. So before we move on to using the pen, I just want to give you a heads up and tell you about my website. On there, I've got over 250 follow along tutorials, just like this one, that you can follow in oil, acrylic, pencil, watercolor, pastel, and pen and ink. And you can get instant access to every single one of them for a very small amount per month. So if you do want to do more projects like this one, head over to my website. I have put the link inside the description. So go and have a look at that. You'll be glad you did. All right, let's continue with the outlining. So you don't have to have a pen like this to, to do this effect. You could use just thin white paint and a rigger brush. So here on the inside you have that lighter bit around the peel. Alrighty, so it's just a bunch of random rough quick squiggles. I'm going to go ahead and do the same with all the other ones. You do the same on yours, and then I'll meet you on the other end. Alrighty, so now I'm going to take some quite intense colors, so some neat orange to get some really bright kind of colors going now. And then I'm just going to add some of this color right next to the white lines just to accentuate these segments a little bit more. But I'm going to do it really rough, really quick. I'm not working accurate at all. If I go over a little bit over the white lines, yeah, so what? It doesn't matter. That's all good.
Okay, and a lighter version, just on the opposite side. So as you can see, all the while I'm just playing. So I still feel the background is a bit dark, so I'm going to start adding a few more of these kind of colors into the background. But all the while just smudging them in. I don't want them to become too prominent. But I do want to just get that background softer, not as brown. Okay, so for the yellow, I think we can use the same orangey color that we used the lighter one in the in the orange. In other words, it was yellow with just a tiny touch of orange in it, because we obviously now we do now need a we do need a contrast. Otherwise, you're not going to see it. Okay, let's take some of this color. him in here for some some guys in the background maybe one over there all the while just trying to get rid of those or soften up the brown that's that's too harsh yeah that should should help. Now we'll take some yellow and add a bit of white to it to get a lighter version. Okay, let's take some of that, work it into the sap green. That'll give us a lighter version of the green. So this round we're adding the, the lighter version first. Yeah, there we go. See, our background is now softened up nicely. Right, so now I'm going to take a rig of brush. 
from this deep orange and again I'm getting lots of water in here I'm working with a rigger brush so the paint needs to be really thin and we just add a really rough outline to indicate the skin I'm not trying to get it perfect in, in actual fact I'm purposefully shaking my hand as I do this to make sure that I don't get it perfect So now I need something darker for the green, so I'm actually going to use a Taylor green instead of the sap green. The Taylor green is a very emeraldy green, which will work great. If you look on the photograph, you'll see we do have that emeraldy Taylor green, dark, dark, dark color on the skin of the limes, so it is there and I'm not trying to follow that ridge exact, it's got to be rough in, in actual fact is it looks better if it doesn't follow that exact ridge of the initial circle. So for the yellow, I'm going to use this. This has a little bit of, just a little bit of orange in it. Otherwise it's not going to stand out. Alright, so let's try that color and see what it looks like. It does seem to work, so we'll stick with him. He's visible, and that's what we want. What's bothering me at this stage is this orange here. I think that's a, maybe a little bit too dark. So I'm first going to just try something. Just add something lighter over it and see what it does. Alright, so we'll just complete the triangle using the yellow, and that does seem to work. So it's not pure yellow, it's got quite a bit of orange in it. Yeah, and I think that's bringing out a triangle shape better. Okay, it's just like a neat yellow for the lime.
Yeah, there we go. I think those lighter segment contrasts has just lifted the fruit up and made it look nice and punchy. You've got good contrast between that darker outside edge and then the, the lighter ridges in the segments. In actual fact, I think I'm happy with him as is. I'm going to call him a day. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Good luck with your painting. I'll see you in the next one.